as the Secretary of Education, you know, my job is to oversee the education system in Pennsylvania from a lot of different perspectives. Um, but uh, the more and more I can not do that from an office building in Harrisburg and do it from classrooms across Pennsylvania, then the better it is for me. Quick little background about me, and then that may help you understand what I do as part of the job. Um, I came into the job a little bit over a year ago with, when the governor was elected. I'm a member of his cabinet. I'm a member of his executive team. And um, my jobs in education, I've been at it for almost 20 years, working at the state and the federal level. When I first started, I was actually the number two in the Pennsylvania Department of Education for a number of years back in the 1990s. And then I went and worked in the federal government, uh, worked under President Bush's administration, and I was the, the right-hand guy to the Secretary, U.S. Secretary of Education, a guy named Rod Page. Rod Page was the superintendent of the Houston School District, the, one of the largest school districts, I think it's the lar third largest school district in the country, and he became U.S. Secretary of Education. And I ended up working for him for a number of years. So um, my, my responsibilities and my background are policy, government, implementing programs at the federal level, the state level, all, all different types of, of areas. Um, the other thing you should know about me is that I'm a dad. <laughs> I got two kids, too, in public schools, a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old. And uh, uh, part of what I try and do in my job day to day is to view what we're doing in state government and federal government and doing education policy things from the perspective of moms and dads and their concerns about what happens with their sons and daughters and their kids uh, when they and when they're thinking about what they should do for education. Hello, Mr. So, Secretary. My name is Shana, and my question is, how is it working on this home convention? It is a lot of fun. Uh, he, he's a he's a when the meetings that I've had with him many times, many times, he asked a lot of very very probing questions, and he will admit, he will come into this room and he'll say. You know, I'm not the expert on this. This is the expert on this, and this is what, the, and this person will tell me about these types of things. So, um, and I think that's a sign of a, of a really good leader in that you I, you identify where your strengths are and your weaknesses are, because you pay for education. I don't pay for it. Uh, the governor doesn't pay for it. Um, legislature doesn't pay for it. That's being paid for by the folks who write the checks. And when the money goes into the system in the public education and all, all government, you know, sometimes we have to see how much money we have coming in and how much money we have going out. It's something that, that is part of my job is to balance that so that we can take the money that we have available to us and target it so that we get the most return. Hello, my name is Brooklyn Ramos. I'm in 11th grade. And my question is, considering that you go around you know, just seeing what's around. What are your views and how do you view it when it comes to bullying? Bullying? Um, well, you know, it's a, that's a tough issue. There, there is, and it's something that's grabbing more and more of the, the, the concerns of, um, Parents, teachers, principals, us at the state level and at the national level. Um, we can't sit back as leaders, whether it's your classroom leader, whether it's your building leader, whether it's the state secretary of education, and see a problem that's impacting a student's ability to get an education, being bullied. To sit there and say, you know, don't worry about it, there's nothing to this is just a rite of passage, or I don't, buy, I don't buy any of that stuff. This is this is a, a strong concern, and but so we're trying to put in place some programs and practices, and your teachers learn all, all the time on how to handle this and help students with this and through this situation. But there's also a certain aspect of it that's the responsibility of the students, right? 
And you, as conscientious juniors and seniors in this high school, know the situations where they occur. I hear stories from my daughters all the time when they come home, and they tell me about what happens in their schools as well. Uh, so this is not something that's new. This is something that's been an issue for years and years and years. This is not something that only is in certain types of communities or certain portions of the state. It's around the state. Indeed, it's around the country. But it's also a responsibility on the part of the, of the adults, but more important, it's a responsibility on the part of students to address this issue.